welcome back to another episode of Raul's World of Sense. I am Raul. Today we're going to be looking at the features of hard and soft sync featured in the A111-1. Uh, if you've been with us in the series, we've kind of covered a few things so far. We kind of did an overview in the beginning, then we talked about exponential FM, and then we did a little bit on linear FM. This time, as I said, we're going to be focusing on hard and soft sync uh, via these two ports down here. Um, for those of you who are sort of unfamiliar with what that means, I'm going to do just a very brief explanation of what it is. Um, in synchronization, usually you have one oscillator that is going to be referred to as the master. And in our case, uh, the master oscillator is going to be the A110. And then the second part of that is you have a slave oscillator that is going to be following the characteristics of the master. So you're probably wondering, okay, what characteristics are you talking about? Well, here it comes. Um, in hard sync, the first one we're going to look at, the waveform of the slave will change directions when the master waveform hits a rising or falling edge. So let's get a look at what that looks like and what it sounds like too. So I have my oscilloscope standing by and uh, we're going to actually get to see some of this as well. So I'm going to start by patching, let's see, let's do the slave waveform first. So taking the triangle wave and then going into here. There we go. And if you look at our oscilloscope, let me just explain what we're looking at here. So on the right, the single white waveform, that is just our uh, final waveform that we're going to be referring to, our slave waveform. Um, and then over on the left, we have a slave waveform, but that slave waveform, the one in red, is actually going to be overlaid with our master waveform here in a moment. So let's get that patched up. And uh, if you're wondering, I'm using the example from the A111 manual, in case you want to follow along with that. Um, and in that example, they use a triangle wave as the slave waveform, and then a rectangle or pulse wave as the master. So I'm going to take this, patch it in, and then I'm going to patch it up here for the moment, just so you can kind of see what's going on. And at our oscilloscope, now you can see two different waveforms right there. And you can see that they look quite different. One of them is sort of static, and I think that might have more to do with the trace, actually. So right there, those are our two waveforms. But you can see that you know one is much taller than the other, and one is kind of much lower, and their shapes overall are different as well. So that's the first step. So now we're going to see what happens when we apply this sort of uh, synchronization. So I'm going to take the output from here, which, which is actually a copy of our master waveform going in here, and then being multiplied there, going to our oscilloscope up there. And then this is our second copy that I'm going to patch into the hard sync input. So here we go. And just keep your eyes on the scope. There we go. And so now you can definitely see that something has happened. Something's changed. Let me unpatch it and you can see that again. So I'm going to unpatch it. So there's the two waveforms on the left and then the waveform on the right. Now patch into hard sync. And you can see it's like they kind of got kind of more in the middle there. Um, now, what's actually happening is, uh, as I was saying earlier, um, the waveform of the slave is changing directions uh, based on when the master waveform hits a rising or falling edge. Um, right now, I happen to have them set to the same octave, or relatively same octave. Um, now, you can have two types of scenarios, as stated in the manual. One where the master VCO frequency is bigger than the slave. So let's take a look at that. So I'm going to basically bring the frequency up of our master. And then just take a look at our waveforms over at the scope. And you also heard that kind of switch that occurred. So when the master VCO's frequency is bigger than the slave, what happens is the slave's frequency, in this case, this one, um, is actually increasing to match the master cycle. 
So let's see that again. I'm going to unpatch from the heart sink. And so what's going to happen is our triangle wave is going to increase to match the master's cycle. So here we go. Heart sink. Keep your eye over on the scope. And then you can also see the waveform changing on the right as well. Cool. Now the other scenario that can occur, I'm going to just bump it down to the center uh, octave again. The other scenario that can occur is when the master VCO's frequency is smaller than the slave, or it's lower. So let's do that and see what happens. And you can see kind of a shifting over there at our scope. And what's happening here is the slave's frequency, again, is trying to match the master cycle. And so that's why you're getting sort of that shift at the scopes over there. Now, there's one other th important thing that's happening here. Uh, because the waveform is being altered in a slightly different way, and that is it's uh, changing directions, some very distinctive sidebands are being created as well. And that's that kind of distinctive sound that we hear right there. Now, for now, all we're doing is kind of listening to drones. Uh, but let me give you an example of what it would sound like in context, like if you had notes coming into the sky. And I think that octave was not the best octave for it, but let me just switch it up one octave. Now this is where they're kind of both at the center octave there. Let me shift it up one octave. So that's that kind of hard sync type sound that sometimes people refer to. And you can even see the waveform shifting if you look at the, the white waveform on the right. That's our final output waveform. Whereas on the left, what we're looking at, of course, is uh, the two separate waveforms. Kind of overlaid with each other. Okay, so let's unpatch the sync. And I'll unpatch my notes. And in case you're wondering where those notes were coming from, uh, over on the left, I have the sequencer set up. Uh, if you've been following the series, you kind of figured that out already. Uh, but you know, these are these notes over here on the left are being generated by the sequencer. And then I'm just taking this cable, which is right here at the A111, and patching it into there. So I'm going to set that down for a moment. And uh, now let's try the soft sync. Uh, variety of synchronization. Now in this type of synchronization, there's not going to be a change in waveform of the slave VCO. Um, what's going to happen is the master VCO is going to force the slave's waveform direction to match uh, its frequency. I think that's right, yeah. So let's, uh, let's hear what that sounds like, soft sync. Or not necessarily frequency, I guess it's uh, harmonic relation is what I meant. So let's try a different octave. I'm going to bring it back to the center. Now we don't see a lot of change happening over there at our scope. And that's kind of characteristic because we're not actually um, making the same types of changes we were doing in the hard sync. Uh, what we're doing in this one is the slave's uh, VCO frequency is actually increased to an exact multiple of the master's VCO. So let's try bringing this up one octave. And you can see that there's not really a lot of change in VCO or in the slave VCO. No matter how much I change it, I'm not really getting any sidebands. And that's one of the other things that's characteristic about soft sync is no sidebands are created, uh, but the two are locked in harmonic relation to each other. And let's hear that in context now, and I'll put some notes in there. So, quite different sounds. Your soft sync compared to your hard sync. Again, this is soft sync. Let's listen to hard sync again.
And there you have it. Hard and soft sync with the A111-1. So hopefully you found this video useful and it gave you just a little bit of a taste as to what the difference between the two is. Um, I didn't want to go into too much detail just to kind of give a general idea as to the differences that can be sort of immediately noticed from the two. Um, you may have your own preference as to which one is your favorite. Uh, for me, I kind of preferred the hard sync. It was kind of a nice little growly type sound. Uh, so I kind of like that. Uh, but the soft sync, you know, of course, it's going to always help you if you are trying to go for something more um, harmonic without uh, as many sidebands. Uh, but at any rate, uh, I do want to thank you for watching. Uh, let's see, the next video that we're going to be looking at is going to be the A111-1, but we're going to be talking about pulse width modulation um, and actually pulse width. So please stay tuned for that and keep on patching out there.